Hi, my name is Dave, and today we're going to look at three interesting small Edmund telescopes. Okay, you have to have a look at this Edmund three and a quarter inch telescope. This is certainly from no newer than the 1960s. It's definitely, it's quite primitive in the construction, and it's a it's a very long focal ratio reflector. This is almost certainly a spherical mirror, probably an F10 mirror at least. Look at how far back the focus comes out here. It's extreme. And let's see, you can probably look down the thing. You can see the really charming and quite primitive kind of a finder. The finder doesn't even have alignment screws. It just slides in there and heaven help you if it's not dead on. Anyway, but it's pretty low power, also a narrow field, narrow field of view. Almost everything about this telescope is telescope in name only. It does function, and actually the optics aren't bad. And it is just really basic. It's just a, you know, this is a really simple friction mount here. Uh, let's compare that with a more modern Edmund. Okay, so this is a, uh, a more modern Edmund. Uh, maybe this is maybe only 20 years old. It's, it's it's got an inch and a quarter eyepiece here. I have no idea what size that is. It's tiny, less than one inch, maybe three quarters of an inch. I don't know. Tiny little thing. <clears throat> oh, and the eyepieces that came with this one, 50 power and 130 power. Absurd. Absurd powers for this kind of amount. You can't hold it steady at 50. It should have a 20 power maybe. Uh, and a 50 power at highest. Uh, anyway, this uh, this one has improved. These are inch and a quarter eyepieces, so it's much better in that respect. Uh, it's also an equatorial mount, so this theoretically would be more effective. It's a little weird because when you have an equatorial mount and this the tube can't rotate, you can get into some really strange configurations. That eyepiece could be in a really strange position. Uh, that was absurd, but you get the idea. It, it gets a little awkward sometimes. Uh, the mount is really not much better. The, the way this thing is made, it's uh, this is just a metal on metal mount with a, a bolt for a friction. It's there, there are no bearings in there to speak of. Same thing here. It's uh, ultra primitive. The finder is probably actually better. It's a peep peep scope kind of a finder. So you got a peep hole here and a peep hole there which probably works better than this thing. That thing is, I'm sure, impossible. Although I, I tried it, it's kind of okay. The focuser here is, this is a slide focuser. Uh, a nightmare to try and focus. This is a little bit better, <laughs> but it's the Edmund, Edmund had a cheesy, this is kind of an early Crayford where it was a friction kind of a deal. And uh, not very, not very good, but better than that. Probably. Anyhow, so this one is of some interest. I love the color. I think the red Edmund color is charming. Okay, wait till you see what I have inside the box here. You're not going to believe. It is amazing. Inside the box here, probably the biggest box possible for this telescope. There it is. This is called the Edmund Voyager 6001. We have instructions and a couple of other goodies here. Here's a special mounting block, a star diagonal, Barlow, a couple of eyepieces. This is the custom made box for this telescope. A little bit of overkill takes up much more room than it really should, but it does protect the telescope, and that's a very important feature. Found that a telescope in a box is often, often a much better telescope because of the fact that it's been protected. A couple of nice dust plugs. Uh, this is a 60 millimeter telescope. It's an Altaz telescope. It's got a great big beefy star diagonal here. Even features a little locking mechanism there. 
A uh, couple of eyepieces, 15 millimeter, 8 millimeter. I think that's probably what it came with. Anyway, so there we have a couple of eyepieces. You can adjust the altitude tension right there. So you can lock it down if you want to, or probably set it someplace so it's convenient. It does have a locking azimuth, although I find it difficult to understand why that would be necessary. But nominally, you could lock it down in azimuth if you wanted to. I think that the mount here, this is all metal by the way, this is not plastic. Well, some of the knobs and some of the other parts are plastic, but this mount is all metal. Um, beautifully made, very, very nicely made. A really cute little telescope. I love the Edmund red color. It's got a, a, a decent little finder here. Uh, finder is probably a 5x24. Not bad, not great, not bad. Um, more usable than some of the other finders I've seen on Edmunds. And it's a 60mm, about f6 uh, or 7 or 8, something like that. So it's a fairly fast optical system, meaning uh, low power is pretty good for low power viewing. It's almost to the ratio that it's a finder, so it's just slightly bigger than a finder. Um, it's, gotta have, it's gonna have a little bit of color because of the fact that it's so fast in a refractor. This is not an Apple Chromats, it's not a Takahashi. So it's gonna have a little chromatic aberration. Um, but other than that, it's a really well-made little telescope. Not bad at all. And in a minute I'll compare it with another scope. Uh, another feature I wanted to show you about this is this. It comes off, it's a little kind of clunky, but it will come off this mount. And then it goes on special, and you'll often see them without this. This is, uh, I'm not sure if it was an extra optional thing or it got thrown away or whatever. Anyway, now we have it set up so that you can mount it on a standard camera tripod. Any kind of, it's a quarter inch 20 kind of a thread there. So you can use this on a standard camera tripod. Okay, so I've already got the adapter attached to this little tripod in the equatorial mount. Okay, so now the Edmund is on an equatorial mount. Let me change the friction here. It doesn't have slow motions, but it does have equatorial, so it's pretty easy to track with something like this. You can use this pretty effectively under the night sky, so it's not bad at all. I hope you've enjoyed this tour of three small Edmund telescopes. Thank you for watching.